Blessed be the one holy and living God. Glory to God forever and ever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires open, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. I will take Great. you from among all nations and gather you from all lands to bring you home. I will sprinkle clean water upon you and purify you from false gods and uncleanness. A new heart I will give you, and a new spirit will I put in you. I will take the stone heart to your chest and give you a heart of flesh. I will help you walk in my laws and share in my commandments and do them. You shall be my people, and I will be your God. Let us pray. Almighty and gracious Father, we give you thanks for the fruits of the earth of the season and for the labors of those who harvest them. Make us, we pray, faithful stewards of your great bounty, for the provision of our necessities and the relief of all who are in need. To the glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Uh, Amen. I'm reading from the book of the prophet Job. Do not fear, full soil. Be glad and rejoice, for the Lord has done great things. Do not fear, you animals of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness are green. The tree bears its fruit, and the fig tree and vine give their full yield. O children of Zion, be glad, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given the early rain for your vindication. He has poured down for you abundant rain, the early and the later rain as before. The threshing floor shall be full of grain. The vats shall overflow with wine and oil. I will repay you for the years that the swarming locust has eaten, the hopper, the destroyer, and the cutter, my great army which I sent against you. You shall eat the plenty and be satisfied, and praise the name of the Lord your God, who has dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never again be put to shame. You shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I, the Lord, am your God, and there is no other. And my people shall never again be put to shame. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Please join in reciting Psalm 126 as thought about today's handout. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, then were we like those who dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are glad indeed. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the water voices of the heaven. Those who sow with tears will reap the songs of joy. Those who go out to meet thee, carrying the sea, will come again with joy, shouldering their sheep. A reading from the first letter to Timothy. First of all, then, I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, 
and thanksgivings be made for everyone, for kings and all who are in high positions, so that we may lead a quiet and peaceful life in all godliness and dignity. This is right and is acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who desires everyone to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God, there is also one mediator between God and humankind. Christ Jesus himself human, who gave himself a ransom for all. This was attested at the right time. For this I was appointed a herald and an apostle. I am telling the truth, I am not lying. A teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. It is not life more than food, and the body more than clothing. Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor weep, nor gather into bundles. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more valuable than they? And can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour of span of life? And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet, I tell you, even Solomon, in all his glory, was not clothed like one of these. What if God was so clothed, uh, so clothed the grass of the fields, which is alive today, and tomorrow thrown into the oven. Will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Therefore, do not worry, saying, What will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear? For it is Gentiles who strive for all these things. And indeed, your Heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But strive first for the kingdom of God, and his righteousness, and all of these things will be given to you as well. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. It's passages like the day that make me wish I could sing. I would love to go in a beautiful rendition of Don't Worry, Be Happy, but I won't do that to you. But that's kind of hard to say, to tell somebody, don't worry, be happy. How do we, in running around in this life, have the, the hope that Christ has called us to do, to have uh, the hope in us? You know, the uh, First Timothy also has a passage in it that says, uh, always be prepared to explain the hope that you have in the Lord. That's sometimes difficult. There's a modern uh, researcher who came out with a study uh, recently that said there are two main factors that we're uh, to consider when we're trying to find how do we have that joy in life and how do we get rid of that worry that we heard about in today's gospel. There were two main points that he said. There was a negative emotion that he found that if you had in your life was really hard on a person. And that negative emotion was revenge. If you were practicing revenge and having revengeful thoughts in your heart, he found that people who had that really had a deterioration in their life. You know, I think that may be one of the reasons why when the disciples asked uh, Jesus, how do you pray? He told them, you know, uh, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
you don't do the forgiving for the other person. I mean, it helps them, but the forgiveness is for you and your own heart. And the other section that they said was exemplified a person who had a good life was a gift of gratitude. That, those two things, a lack of revenge and a spirit of gratitude, really had a positive impact on how a person went about in their lives. You know, when you read in Matthew where uh, Jesus is telling them, do not worry, it's kind of hard. It's kind of hard not to worry about those things that you have in your life. I really like one of, another of my favorite songs that I sing to myself often when things are going very poorly is rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. I find that we're to have the joy of Christ in us despite our circumstances. You know that it's interesting looking at uh, people who are the most thankful. It's often those who don't have very much. In Luther's uh, table talk, he talks about how uh, that there's often an inverse. The more you have, the less thankful to God you are, and the less you have, the more thankful you are. Uh, give it an example. A, a, a hungry person who has nothing is much more thankful for a small morsel than a rich person who has a table strewn with more food than they can eat. In that case, they're more thankful. Or another example would be a, uh, a woman in a uh, nursing home who gets one visitor in a week is much more thankful for that visit than someone who has a party thrown in their honor where everyone's pouring glory onto them. It's these little things that we need to be thankful it's the little things in our lives that bring us joy. And I think as we're uh, looking at the birds of the field, I think this is kind of what Jesus was getting at in this passage. You know, look at the birds of the field. They go about in their day and live their lives. They neither sow nor reap, but they don't worry. They go about their lives and have that joy and no matter what the circumstances are going around them. So for this Thanksgiving feast that some of us will be having tomorrow, remember to be thankful for those little things in your lives. Be thankful for the multitude of blessings that God has poured down upon you, even if you might think that they're small. The joy that we have, the hope that we have in Christ Jesus is where our joy should be laid. Let us proclaim our faith, which covers the earth and spans the ages, by reciting the Ninth Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God of God, light from light, true God and true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through and in all that you will say, for us, for our salvation, being down in heaven, by the power of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and in truly human. For our saint who is crucified under the crown of Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. And with the Father and the Son, the Lord should be glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. 
We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. Friends of the people, Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That they may be just as the seeds of the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our that works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light and special shine upon us. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Hasten, O Father, the coming of your kingdom, and grant that we, your servants, who now live by faith, may with joy behold your Son and his coming in glorious majesty, Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins to God. God of all mercy, we, we confess that we sin against you, the foes of your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness to each other and in ourselves, and we're good and good. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil that we have done, and the evil that we have done in our Forgive us, restore and strengthen us through our Savior Jesus Christ, who may be able to abide in your love and serve only in your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness by the power of the Holy Spirit, and keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Lord be with you. And also with you. 
lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. We praise you and we bless you, holy and gracious God, source of life abundant. From before time, you made ready the creation. Your spirit moved over the deep and brought all things into being, sun, moon, and stars, earth, winds, and water, and every living thing. You made us in your image and taught us to walk in your ways, but we rebelled against you and wandered far away. And yet, as a mother carries for her children, you would not forget us. Time and again, you called us to live in the fullness of your love, and so this day, we join with saints and angels in the chorus of praise that sings through eternity, lifting our voices to magnify you as we say, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Glory and honor and praise to you, holy and living God, to deliver us from the power of sin and death and to reveal the riches of your grace. You looked with favor upon Mary, your willing servant, that she might conceive and bear a son, Jesus, the holy child of God. Living among us, Jesus loved us. He broke bread with outcasts and sinners, healed the sick and proclaimed good news to the poor. He yearned to draw all the world to himself, yet we were heedless to call him to walk in love. Then the time came for him to complete upon the cross the sacrifice of his life and to be glorified by you. And the night before he died for us, Jesus was at the table with his friends. He took bread and gave thanks to you, broke it and gave it to them and said, Take Eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this with a remembrance of me. That supper was ending. Jesus took the cup of wine. Again, he gave thanks to you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Now gather to your table, O God, of all of creation, and remembering Christ crucified and risen, who was and is and is to come, we offer to you our gifts of bread and wine and ourselves, a living sacrifice. Pour out your Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the body and blood of Jesus Christ. Breathe your Spirit over the whole earth, and make us your new creation, the body of Christ, given for the world you have made. For in the fullness of time, bring us to the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Luke, and all your saints, from every tribe and language and people and nation, to feast at the banquet prepared from the foundation of the world, through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to be to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them, reps, that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your heart, my 
faith with thanksgiving. The body of Christ, the blood of Christ. The body of Christ, the blood of Christ. Let us pray. Loving God, we give you thanks for restoring us in your image and nourishing us with spiritual food in the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. Now send us forth a people forgiven, healed, renewed, that we may proclaim your love to the world and to continue in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. May the peace of God which surpasses all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God. May the blessing of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit be with you this day and always. Amen. For those that are watching at home for our uh, feast challenge, uh, the number today is 988. That's 988. Let us go forth to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Yeah.